So now that the wheels are off, it's time to dig into the brakes. Now the first thing uh, that I like to do, and this is by no means a requirement, is give this area a little bit of a clean. Uh, this drum is a little bit rusty on the outside, and there's a couple of tools that I'm going to use. Uh, basically, I'm going to clean from here all the way out to here before I take anything else apart. There's a couple of tools that uh, you're really going to need to do this. Uh, number one, safety glasses. Number two, earplugs, because this is not a quiet process. For the most part, you can take the large chunks off using a hammer. Um, it may seem kind of brutal, but giving it good hits in certain areas is going to make that rust pop right off. And then I finish that off using a needle scaler. Um, this is pretty effective in just you know walking around the surface, knocking big chunks off, and uh, gets it nice and clean and ready for paint. I'd say that probably took me half an hour to get all the way around the drum, uh, including the, the face of the axle and all that. So the next step in the process is going to be removing the axle, which involves removing these bolts here. This you need a 17 millimeter socket. We're going to take all of these out, and then the axle shaft will slide out. So hopefully with a couple of taps on the back side here, this will start to come out. There we go. Broke that. Get something under there to catch the stuff that snuck past the seal. And I'm going to grab another paper towel so that can wipe the shaft clean as it comes out. So once you pop that off there, it just kind of slides out, out of the differential. There's the end, it sits in the differential. Just set that aside. So pulling the seal out is very straightforward. A pair of pliers, grab the little ridge, and should uh, wiggle out. And once this is out, we have access to these two bolts here, which hold on the lock ring, which holds the nut in place. These are 10 millimeter and the torque on them is pretty minimal, so it doesn't take much to get them to start coming out. Once those are out, then we can start undoing the nut, large nut that holds all of this stuff on. The tool. Get that out. And now this is where we start needing our special service tools. So I'll put a little image up on the screen here. Uh, I made my own. Uh, the dimensions are in the, the Fuso manual. Pretty straightforward. Uh, and this nut, the entire thing, just unscrews off of the stub here. So this is what my special service tool uh, homemade looks like. The nut welded to a plate uh, with two bolts coming out of the back of it. Those two bolts slide into the two holes, and then you can undo the nut using a socket on that. So for me, this is a 24 millimeter nut, but whatever your custom-made special service tool is, once you've got it loosened off, you can just spin it by hand. It's uh, nothing complicated. So 
off with that nut. You can see the bolts just slide in there. So that's it's just a big socket, really funny shaped socket. But. All right, so now in behind here, we've got a washer with a little T hook, or I don't know what you want to call it, but again, just use a little hook tool, get it moving. You just need to be careful because in the top right here, see if we can get a little better view of that right here. This actually sticks down into a slot in the axle. And if you start turning this, that little tab can become damaged. So get the washer out um, carefully, and then we can start pulling the drum off. Okay, if you're having a lot of trouble getting this in behind on one side, the other thing you can do is try and squeeze it between two. So I've got the hook on one side and a screwdriver on the other and just kind of walk it out. It's, it's not complicated, it is a little fiddly. Um, so once we get to that point, we can get the hook underneath the edge of the washer there and just keep giving it a wiggle. Eventually, something will move far enough that, oh, that you can take it off. There we go. So, there you can see the little tab on the washer, and that's what you need to line up with the slot in the top of the axle. Once you get that washer removed, what you're actually looking at is the back side of the outer bearing here. So right now there is nothing left holding the drum on and we can start extracting the drum with the next special service tool. All right, so the next version of the special service tool is um, I've made a plate, and that plate pushes against the axle here, uh, the axle housing, sorry, and then this channel, which bolts on to two of the axle bolts out here, and we have a long bolt that goes through, and what this does, it goes through this threaded part here, Got a nut welded on there. As it comes through there, it goes into this. So basically what we have is two pieces that force each other apart, which is gonna pull the drum off. What you do need to make sure of is that you're not catching the back of the drum if there's a ridge on the pads when you're pulling the drum off. If you start catching on the pads, you need to retract the pads, and I'll show you how to do that as well. Um, but just make sure when the drum is coming off, if there's a lot of resistance, you need to check the clearance with the, sorry, not the pads, the shoes, the, the shoes to the back of the drum where there could be a ridge that's holding everything tight. Right, so my special service tool is mounted and all I need to do now is turn this. And as I turn this, it'll start extracting the drum off. You can see it's starting to move there. It's coming very easily. So there's little to no force required to get this to move once it starts and I feel no resistance against the pads. Once I get to the point where the bearing is at the outer end of the axle shaft or the stub that is going to stop moving because my square plate is larger than the diameter of the axle shaft so it actually runs into the bearing but I have now extracted that drum and you can see over here the gap that I have in the back, so this drum is now starting to come free of the pads, or the shoes, sorry, that you can see inside there. Should be able to, at this point, just remove this tool and pull the drum off by hand. So unlike the removal of the wheels, hopefully this part goes as expected. And nope. So what I'm finding at this point is, even though it came off fairly easily with the special tool, um, there is enough drag on the pad at the back of the drum that I can't actually pull it off by hand. So I'm going to have to retract the shoes just a little bit. Uh, even though there isn't very much friction there, there's enough that I can't pull this off by hand. So I'm going to retract the shoes next. Um, there is a little diagram in the service manual on how to do this, but basically another special service tool. Uh, I made this out of a piece of TIG rod, and it just happens to be that from here, to here is just the right distance that when you push it in through the back of the drum face plate back here through the little hole, uh, it happens to just push up against the inside of the spring uh, pack uh, or the, the U-bolt that holds it and holds everything in place so that you can turn the, the gear. There's a little cog. This releases the tooth from the cog and then you spin the cog with a flat blade screwdriver. First thing you need to do Pop these rubber plugs out, don't lose them. 
you are going to want to put them back in after. So there's the square one, and there's a round one. Pop those both out. And then our special service tool, which by the way, 159 millimeters long from here to here. Hope that's all in frame. Yep. Uh, which is uh, about six and a quarter inches, and it is made of four millimeter or five thirty seconds rod. So this goes in through this hole, and it's going to push on a uh, little gear releaser tab somewhere in there. A little bit hard to find. You got to play around a bit. So with the 159 millimeter length, it actually just sort of tucks in behind this part of the uh, spring mount and then what you need to do is take your screwdriver go in through the hole and to retract the shoes you want to turn the wheel in the opposite direction that the arrow is pointing which means the handle of your screwdriver is going to go in the same direction So I've retracted both of the uh, gear adjusters in the back there, the front and the back, uh, by about 10 turns, but that's totally going to depend on what the back side of your drum is going to be like and what the, the pads are like, or shoes are like. So at this point, uh, I should be able to, I have free play in the drum, uh, it should continue to slide off. There's the outer bearing. Be ready, because are heavy. So there we go. Drums off with the hub. Make sure I don't put that down on the bearing. And now we can get a good look at the amount of shoe material left and the inside of the drum. Give a good inspection in there. Check out our bearings and the running surface here. Check the level of grease. Do any of the service needed? There you have it, fairly straightforward process. We've got it all torn apart, ready for an inspection. Any parts that need to be replaced or adjust, new bearings, uh, new seals, anything like that, re-grease it. Next video, we'll throw it all back together. I hope that video helps someone. Uh, if you enjoy this type of video, please click on subscribe. There's plenty more to come. Share the video with anybody who you think may be able to use it. Give us a thumbs up, give us a like, throw a comment down below if you've got a question or a comment on something that you think I did wrong or not quite sure how I did it. And we'll see you in the next one where I'm putting it all back together. Thanks for watching.